Have you ever heard of the movie Brewster McCloud? If not, you're in for a treat. It's a film from 1970 that's full of funny, shocking, and sad moments that will keep you hooked. The story follows a young man with a big dream he wants to build wings and fly away from his problems. But things take a turn when he becomes the main suspect in some strange murders happening in the city. As you watch, you'll find yourself laughing at the crazy situations, gasping at the unexpected twists, and maybe even shedding a tear. With its mix of humor, suspense, and emotion, it's a movie that sticks with you. So, who was your favorite character in the movie? Or maybe you have a special memory connected to it. Share your thoughts in the comments below. Keep watching for more interesting facts about Brewster McCloud. Brewster McCloud premiered in 1970 and received mixed reviews. However, it gained a following over time due to its unique storyline and quirky characters. Despite not being a hit right away, the movie inspired other filmmakers to try new things. The movie's influence went beyond just films. It led to spin-offs, merchandise, and adaptations. Even though it wasn't as popular as some other movies, it still has an impact today, inspiring artists in different ways. Overall, Brewster McCloud may not have been a big success at first, but it continues to inspire people in various fields. Brewster McCloud underwent significant rewriting by Brian McKay uncredited, with last-minute improvisations from director Robert Altman and the cast. Otto Preminger initially declined Dorn William Cannon's script, but later made Skidoo instead. A scene shows Brewster walking in a rainstorm, reflecting Texas Gulf Coast weather patterns. Rainfall, influenced by Gulf moisture, averages around 66 inches yearly at Bush Intercontinental Airport, peaking at 88 100 inches during hurricanes. The climate is humid subtropical, typical of the Houston metro area. Robert Altman, acclaimed filmmaker, often hailed Brewster McCloud as his boldest work. The movie, shot in 1970, contains an interesting tidbit about a chase scene filmed in the Riverside Terrace neighborhood, which later fell victim to bulldozers during the construction of State Highway 288. The location, including a sharp curve on North MacGregor east of Almeter Road, was erased, making way for the Highway 288 overpass and elevated sections for service lanes. One intriguing aspect of the film is a seemingly unusual editing choice that turns out to be a clever jest by Altman in the opening credits. What appears to be a mistake, featuring two repeat title sequences, is in fact a deliberate move. The repetition is tied to Daphne Heap's insistence that the band stop playing and redo the fanfare in the correct key, creating a subtle and humorous link to the credits. In summary, Brewster McCloud, considered Altman's boldest venture, includes unique elements like the Riverside Terrace chase scene affected by highway construction and a clever credit sequence joke. These aspects contribute to the film's distinctiveness, showcasing Altman's creative choices and storytelling finesse. Released 11 months after MASH, Robert Altman's Brewster McCloud marked another milestone in the director's career. It was the first feature film to be shot entirely inside the Houston Astrodome, offering a unique setting for the story. Louise, portrayed by Sally Kellerman, cruises around in an AMC Gremlin, a nod to the mischievous spirits known as Gremlins, who historically caused trouble in flying machines. Altman's innovative use of location and quirky storytelling contributed to the film's distinctiveness, showcasing his ability to push boundaries in cinema. In the movie Brewster McCloud, William Wyndham did something unexpected. He appeared nude in a scene in a hot tub near the end of the film, which got a lot of attention nationwide. While filming, he and his wife took classes in Houston to prepare for the birth of their second child, who was born in July. Even though Bud Court, who was only 22 years old, acted like a diva, causing annoyance among many, his talent was undeniable. Despite being young and new to the industry, his skills overshadowed any bad impressions he made. The people making the movie had to deal with challenges and conflicts, but they still managed to make a movie that people remember. Brewster McCloud is considered a classic example of the kind of filmmaking that was popular at the time. It's still remembered and talked about today, showing how special it was. This trivia gives us a glimpse into what went on behind the scenes and the personal stories that make the movie's history interesting. In December 1970, the movie Brewster McCloud premiered at the Houston Astrodome, drawing a crowd of 2930. Directed by Robert Altman, the film underwent changes, including the replacement of cinematographer Jordan Cronenweth with Lamar Boring. Doran William Cannon's script, existing for years, once caught the interest of Bob Dylan, who considered portraying the titular character. Despite delays, Altman's vision came to fruition. Brewster McCloud, an eccentric film, captured attention with its unique storyline and characters. Brewster McCloud, released in 1970, 
featured actress Shelley Duvall in her debut role, earning her an introducing credit. Directed by Robert Altman, the film underwent several alterations from the original script, including a change in the protagonist's surname from McLeod to McLeod. Altman also shifted the setting from a New York airport to Houston, Texas. The film follows the story of a young man, Brewster McLeod, who lives in a fallout shelter beneath the Houston Astrodome, aiming to fulfill his dream of flying. As Brewster works on his makeshift wings, he becomes entangled in a murder investigation within the stadium. Throughout the film, Brewster navigates eccentric characters and surreal situations while pursuing his unconventional ambition. Altman's direction and Duval's performance added depth to the quirky narrative, making Brewster McLeod a unique and memorable cinematic experience. In a scene from the film, Abraham Wright rolls downhill with the M&M &M building in the background, which was then part of South Texas Junior College until 1974. Later, the University of Houston took over the building. The southbound lanes visible in the film were reconstructed in 2002 for the Metrorail Line's northern terminus. However, by December 2013, the terminus shifted to the North Line Transit Center. Renowned filmmaker Robert Altman directed seven films featuring her, including Brewster McLeod, McCabe, and Mistress Miller, Thieves Like Us, Nashville, Buffalo Bill, and The Indians, Three Women, and Popeye. Altman made significant alterations to screenwriter Doran William Cannon's script, which displeased him greatly. Cannon expressed his frustration in a fiery editorial in the New York Times, criticizing the film harshly. The film Brewster McLeod explores a recurring theme involving bird feces, a motif that director Altman revisits in his 1994 film Ready to Wear, which also fixates on dog excrement. During the script's development, Doran William Cannon envisioned Austin Pendleton for the role eventually taken by Brewster. Pendleton, having worked with Cannon and Skidoo, opted for Catch-22 instead. Shelley Duvall made her debut in the film. It's interesting to note how these elements shape the narrative and the trajectory of the actors involved. Bob Dylan expressed interest in the script. In one scene, Louise drives a 1978 MC Gremlin. Interestingly, five years later, the Houston Police Department experimented with a 1975 AMC Gremlin as a police vehicle, but didn't pursue it further. Daphne Heap, portrayed by Margaret Hamilton, wears red rhinestone slippers in a nod to her role in The Wizard of Oz. Her character, reflecting the tumultuous late 1960s, exhibits bigotry using racial epithets. The soundtrack briefly features Over the Rainbow during her scenes, 